Otaksi prātu tak pratās čestās tikā. Tevam višnā, tevam višnā. Otam pratām čestām tikā. Kad vienīci pradēmē papirīkšanās, bet tāds apdrīdīt kā, tā kā gaspūt višnā. Pranīzvēt dod i papirūk, vis pradāk dīvē. Om Magyāna Tmarandasya Gyanamjana Savakāja Chakshūrīta Vena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Manopishtam Stavitam Vena Bhutale Svayam Rupaka Namayam Dadati Svapadansikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yadavada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsya Shri Rupam Sadrajatam Sahagana Ragana Tanvitam Tam Sashayavam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parishana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Rai Nāpadam sahakana labhita shri vishaka nitam shya He Krishna karna sindhu jīna vandhu jagatpate Gopesha gopika kanta rādha kanta namastute Tata kanta na govande rande vrinda vineshvari Vrishabhāna Sudhavedi Pranamāmi Haribri Vanchakaupātarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Vaevacha Patitanam Pavanedyo Vaishnavedyo Namam Namah Namam Vishnu Padāya Krishna Vrishtāya Bhūtale Shemate Bhakti Vedanta Sasamani Hidamane Namaste Sarskati Devi Gaurabhani Kacharine Nirvishesha Shunyabhadi Vashyatyade Shatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadakara Shri Vasudhyoa Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Yamaraj, the king of the lord of death who punishes sinful people is replying to questions put by his servants, the Yamaduta. The Yamadutas had gone to arrest Ajamil at the time when he was supposed to die. But when the Yamadutas tried to take Ajamil away, at that time, the Vishnu Dutas came. And the Vishnu Dutas would not let the Yamadutas take Ajamil. So the Yamadutas were defeated by the Vishnu. And they came back to their master, Yamaraj, to inquire from him, who were these people, who were these Vishnu Dutas? They had, because the Yamadutas had never been Usually, wherever a person, uh, wherever they approach the person, they, would, uh, they could take them without any problem. Nobody would challenge them. Because before, in the moment when they approached someone, they could 
всегда у них все получалось, но никто не мешал им. So it was a great, it was a great shock to the Yamadutas that someone could challenge their authority, and they came back to tell their master what had happened. Это был настоящий шок для Ямадута, то что кто-то подставил поставил под сомнение их авторитет, и они пришли к своему господину, чтобы спросить, что же произошло. They were confident that their master was the, supreme, the highest authority. And they thought nobody can oppose, nobody could challenge the authority of the God of Death. But they found that they were, they were defeated. Vishnu Dutas came and said, you cannot take this person because he has become freed of all of his sinful reactions. So the Yamadutas came back to Yamaraj and they wanted to know that is there somebody greater than you in this universe? И поэтому они обратились к Ямараджи и спросили, разве есть кто-то более великий, чем ты в этой вселенной? Нам очень нравится думать о нашем положении, мы думаем, что мы самые лучшие. You know, we have the, the idea that maybe we think our country is the best country. Например, у нас есть такое мышление, наша страна самая лучшая страна. Либо мы думаем о себе, я такая замечательная личность, я такой хороший. Я могу делать то, что то, что мне нравится. Обычно мы не обращаем внимания на тех, кто стоит выше нас. Обычно мы считаем себя свободными делать все, что мы захотим. Мы считаем, что над нами не стоит никакого авторитета. Обычно мы даже не отдаем себе отчет в том, что над нами стоит намного много других контролирующих. Just like in every country there are there's a government, and the government they make the laws which everyone has to live by. Например, в каждой стране есть в каждом в каждом государстве есть какое-то управление. И какие-то власти, они создают законы, согласно которым нужно жить. И был такой случай пару лет назад в Сингапуре. Молодой американец... Молодой американец, он приехал в Сингапур, и его поведение, оно вышло за рамки приличия. Его арестовали и привезли в суд. И судья приговорил его к смерти. И его приговорили к избиению палком. Quite common in Singapore. И это очень часто наказание в Сингапуре. We have that kind of law there. То есть у них есть такое законодательство. So when he was sentenced like that, then the American president said, "No, he's an American. You can't do that." И когда его приговорили к этому наказанию, американский президент сказал: "Нет, вы не можете это сделать. You can't beat one of our citizens." Вы не можете так избить одного из наших наших But the Singapore government said, "Well, he's in our country. He broke our laws. We can punish him as we like." No, власти Сингапура сказали нет, он в нашей стране, он нарушил 
When you go to China, they have different laws. We have to follow them. So there's different authorities. There's different governments and each government has an authority over their particular land. So the Yamadurras, they were thinking their master is the best, he's the highest, he's the ultimate authority. So they were very disappointed when they were defeated. So they have come back to Yamaraj to ask him that is there somebody above you? So Yamaraj is explaining yes that I am not the supreme. There are people above me. I work for I work under the authority of other people. И Марач объясняет, что да, есть, надо мной есть определенные личности под авторитетом, в которых я нахожусь. Я Марач has some power, but only limited power. У Мараджа есть могущество, есть сила, но она ограничена. As Prabhupada says in the purport, he can only punish the sinful people. Как говорит Шила Прабхупада в комментариях, and he can only punish the human beings. Animals don't get karma. Just like dogs eat meat. They don't get karma. But if we kill an animal, buy meat to give to the dog, we get karma. Because we're human beings. We're under a different legal system. The animals don't have any government, there's no laws for the animals. The dogs may mate in the street. They don't get punished for it. They are animals. They're not human beings. So they're not under, they're not expected to follow laws. But human beings are expected to follow. They have certain obligations. They have to live in a proper manner, civilized human beings. You can't expect to have civilized animals. Of course, people do, they train animals to a certain extent. But still, they're animals. And they cannot follow like a human being. So Yamaraj, his jurisdiction or his power of control is limited to sinful human beings. 
Бараджа и в его власть ограниченная вещь с духовными людьми. И если этот человек не греховен, то Бараджа не имеет никакой власти над ним. There's one and above all the different demigods, which there are many, many demigods, there's one supreme master. And that supreme master, he expands himself, his manner, he is expanded in the form of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. И тот верховный, он распространяет себя в следующие три формы. Это Господь Брама, Вишну и Шива. Брама отвечает за творение, Вишну за поддержание и Шива за уничтожение Вселенной. И таким образом они являются лишь They themselves are very powerful, but they are also not the ultimate supreme. Они сами по себе очень могущественные, но они не являются верховными. Above them, there is one supreme original personality. Над ними стоит стоит изначальный верховный Господь. Then Yamaraj gives an example. He said, just like with two threads. You can bind, use two threads to make a cloth. One goes the length, along the length, and the other the breadth. And this way you make a cloth. And so this, Yamaraj gives this example, he said, this is supreme controller, it's just like this thread. It's all under his control. He gives another example. Just like the bull is controlled by a rope in its snow. The bulls are very big, powerful and animals. Бык это очень мощное животное. But when they're very young, the farmer puts a hole in it through its nose and they put a rope through there. Но когда он еще мал, тогда фермер он протыкает нос этому быку и вставляет туда веревку. Маленький может маленький фермер может взять это пальцем. Young fermer. Young fermer. Ага. Ну даже маленький маленький ребенок And when the bull grows big and strong, even though a little boy may come and take the rope, and he can control the bull. So just like that big bull is controlled, the same way this whole world Controlled. And that one controller is the supreme personality of Godhead. We say there is one controller. Above all others are his servants. So the constitutional position of all living entities is to be the servant. And part of the, the difficulty in this material world is to overcome this consciousness that we are not the master, we are not. 
трудности существования в этом материальном мире заключается в том, чтобы понять, что мы не являемся господином, что мы не являемся контролирующим. Именно это и называется ложным эгом. Ложное эго нам говорит, я действующий, я контролирующий, от меня все зависит. The actual pure ego is to understand I am a servant of the Supreme. No, we want to be the master. We want to be the enjoyer. But this is not our position. We are not controllers, but we are controlled. We are not enjoyers, but we are enjoyed. Everyone is controlled, whether we're either we're controlled by Maya or we're controlled by Krishna. We have that choice. We have free will. Either we surrender to Maya or we surrender to Krishna. When we surrender to Maya, then we are controlled by the Maya. And when we surrender to Krishna, we are controlled by Krishna. So we have that choice, either to be controlled by Krishna or Maya. Now the sinful people, they want to be controlled by Maya. But they're thinking, they're not thinking I'm controlled by Maya, they're thinking I'm free, I can do what I like. They're thinking, I can smoke and drink and take drugs and eat meat. I can do what I like. But this is just the control of Maya. Maya controls the people through the different modes of material nature. And they're, they're, they're led into doing many different sinful activities. And then the result of these activities is they bring Yamaraj, the God, or his servants, the Yamadutas. And the Yamadutas, they take the person to to their master for punishment. And Yamaraj has his secretary. He has a secretary. His name, the secretary's name is Chitra Gupta. And he's keeping a record of all the sinful activities of the people. So, when the sinful person comes before Yamaraj, Yamaraj gets the report, just like the judge in the court. They get the information, what the person has done, what crimes he has performed. And then the judge will consider everything and he will decide what is the punishment. So the same way Yamaraj, he decides what body, what is the appropriate punishment for this person. And there are different hellish planets, different kinds of hell, different punishments for different sinful people. So Yamaraj 
book, he sentences the different souls into different kinds of punishment. And of course, the, I, the principle or the idea is that after being punished, then one will be more cautious not to commit sinful activities. But then gradually come back to the human form of life. And again, in the human form of life, we're given the opportunity to have, we have free will. In the different kinds of hell and in the lower species of life, the animal species and the plant species, we don't have any opportunity, we don't have that free will. But in the human body, we have the choice. We, we have some independence. But that independence is very small. It's only either we choose Maya or Krishna. When we take shelter of Krishna, then Krishna arranges for the devotee to be properly situated in Krishna consciousness. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Satatam Kartiyantumam Yatantas Jatradavita. Always chanting my glories, endeavoring with great determination, these souls worship me with devotion. It's Mahatma Nastu Mamparta Daivin Prakriti Mashita. These great souls are under my divine energy. So they fully engage in my devotion of service. So when we take shelter, we approach Krishna, surrender to Krishna, Krishna gives us the opportunity for engagement in his service. Service is the dharma of the soul. The nature of the soul. Just like the nature of sugar is sweet. The nature of a chili. You know chilies? They're very hot. <laughs> In the same way, the soul's nature is service. Everyone is engaged in some kind of service. Mother serves the child. The father will serve the family. Soldier will serve the country. The teacher is the servant of the students. Everyone is engaged in some kind of service. So this is the nature of the soul. But in conditioned life, we want we don't want to serve. Even, even we become the president of the country, he's a servant of the country. He has, he has to think of the welfare of his citizens. The king is serving his Our 
tradition. We make the, our tradition is servant, but we want to be master. So there is a master, and uh, there is only one master above all other. There are many small masters, but above all the small masters, there's one supreme master. Just like Brahma, he is the head of the universe. He was the first person to be born in the universe. Just like when you're the oldest son in a family. You may have many brothers and sisters. But, but when you're the first one, you're the oldest one. So we think, I'm the, I'm the oldest, I'm the senior, you listen to me. And we want to dominate and control the Lord, brother, all the other brothers and sisters. So similarly, Lord Brahma, He's born first in the universe. And from Brahma, so many other children, so many offspring. So all of the offspring, they all look up to Brahma. He is our father. Uh, he is our grandfather. <laughs> So we all, all the living entities are worshipping Brahma. So because they are all giving him respect, Brahma says, sometimes even I think I am the Supreme. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Brahma then also knows that there are people above him. There are people above Brahma. Just like one time Brahma went to Krishna. And so when Brahma came to Dwarka, Krishna's servant asked, Lord Krishna wants to know which Brahma. And Brahma was surprised. He said, which Brahma? <laughs> I am Brahma, Lord Brahma. Does, what does he mean, which Brahma? <laughs> anyway, he said to the servant, I am four-headed Brahma. In this universe, Brahma has so the servant went and told Lord Krishna, and then Lord Krishna said, yes, bring him in. And when Brahma entered, he was surprised to see there were many other Brahmas there. And Brahma, many Brahmas, who had many, many more heads than him. <laughs> and they were all bowing to Krishna. So, Lord Brahma is, you know, his position is so great, but even he thinks like that. He's thinking, I am supreme, but then he finds out there's somebody also above. So how foolish we are to think that we could be supreme. Or to think that we're very important or very necessary for this world. We are thinking, oh, I have to be here, I have to I'm the only one who can do it. And 
If I'm not here, how will everything go on? No, the world will fall apart. The world will come to an end without me. <laughs> so Yamaraj is telling Yamadudas, no, I'm sorry to disappoint you, I'm not the Supreme. We all like to think we're the best, or we're working for the best. We get a job, we think, my company is the best, very good. <laughs> well, there may be so many more companies. But still, we, are, we like to think we are the best. <laughs> Prabhupada tells a story about a young boy who he very much dis he wanted to be the servant of the best, the highest, the, the most important person. So, so in his village, the, mo the head of the village was the, the most important person. So he went to the head of the village and he requested him, please accept me as your servant. So the head of the village well, he's a nice young boy, he has good qualities. Let, I will take him, let him become my servant in my home. So the young boy was serving the headman of the village, and he was feeling very satisfied that I am serving the head of the village, my Master is the head, he's the most important person in the village. And people used to come to the man in the village and they would sometimes they would give presents and sometimes even give money to him. And the young boy is feeling very satisfied. I am serving the very best, the most important person. But then one day, the tax collector came. And the tax collector came to the head of the village collected all the taxes from the headman of the village. The headman, the headman of the village, he paid the tax collector, gave a lot of wealth to him. The young boy was very surprised. Who is this man? My master is giving all his hard-earned wealth. He's giving it all to him. So he thought, I should go and work for this man. My master is not. I should work for this man, the tax collector. So he approached the tax collector and he begged him, please allow me to be your servant. I will serve you nicely. Please let me come with you. So the, the tax collector took the young boy with him and the young boy was washing his clothes, he would arrange the meals, he would do very nice service for the tax collector. And the tax collector went to all the villages, he collected all the taxes, and the young boy thought, oh, wonderful, my master is so great. 
деньги. Во всех этих деревнях мальчик был очень доволен. Он думал, вот, теперь я служу правде Богу. But then, eventually, the tax collector, it came time for him to go back to the kingdom, back to the king. And he brought all the wealth, and he gave it all to the king. And the young boy saw the king. This man is greater than my master. Когда он увидел себя, он подумал, этот человек, он еще более велик, чем мой господин. The, king, И тогда он стал умолять короля, пожалуйста, разрешите мне стать вашим слугой. So the king accepted the young boy in his palace, and the young boy is living there as a servant of the king. И король принял его, принял его, разрешил жить у него во дворце, заниматься там служением. And he saw many people come and honor the king. He's thinking, I have the supreme master. My king is the most important person. But then he saw the king one day. He took his wealth and he took it and he went into the forest. And he gave it to some yogi in the forest. Но в один день царь собрал все свое богатство и поехал в лес, чтобы отдать все это йогам. So, yogi, и он увидел, как царь кланяется этим йогам, и тогда он подумал, эти йоги еще более могущественные, более великие, чем царь. И так он стал слугой йога. But then the yogi, he took all the wealth and he brought it to the temple and gave all the wealth to the deity. He saw the yogi bow in the temple to the deity and surrender everything. And then the young boy became the servant. И тогда этот мальчик стал слугой этих божеств. So И так, наконец, он стал слугой Верховного Господина. В конечном итоге есть только один Верховный Господин во всем. So that one Supreme Lord is fulfilling the desires of everyone according to their Everything is moving under his direction through his different potencies. The material energy, material nature does not act without the sanction of the Supreme Lord. Материальная энергия, материальный мир не может ничего сделать без Верховного Господа. The material energy is like a shadow of the, the supreme. Shadow? Shadow. A shadow. shadow. Материальная энергия, она подобна тени Верховного Господа. Yeah, just like the shadow does not move independently. You can see the shadow of the chair on the floor. Тень, она не может двигаться независимо. Мы можем видеть сейчас эту тень на полу. So the shadow is not moving, it's staying. So long as this chair stays in one place, the shadow stays. You move the chair, the shadow moves. In the same way, material nature moves under the control of Krishna. Sometimes Krishna will say, now it is time for creation, and the material world will come into creation. And when Krishna orders, now it is time for annihilation, then the whole world will be destroyed. Everything is under his direction. There is nothing independent. Нет ничего, что было бы независимо от Кришны. 
So people will often say, well, if there is this controller, where is he? Why can't we see him? Well, Krishna gives the example in the Bhagavad Gita. He says that it's all resting on me. He said it's just like these beads on our neck, the neck beads, they're on a thread. But you don't see the thread, you only see the beads. So Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, there is no truth superior to me. Everything is resting on me, just like these beads are on a thread. You see the beads, you don't see the thread. Just like the example, the clock, it's two threads, one horizontal, one vertical. We don't, see, we don't think of it as being two threads. We only see the clock. In the same way, we look at the material world. We don't see it's all actually held together by Krishna. There's a personality behind it. Just like Wherever you go, somebody's in charge. You walk into a shop, someone's in charge. They will say, yes, what do you want? Right? You walk into a building, an office, they say, yes, what do you want? Why do you come here? Somebody's in charge. Can we say nobody's in charge? Everywhere you go, someone's in charge. In the same way, how can we think there's nobody in charge of this world? Someone's in charge of Russia, someone's in charge of China, someone's in charge of Nepal, someone's in charge of India. In the same way, someone's in charge of this earth planet. In charge of the earth planet, the deity of the earth planet is Bumi. Bumi is in the form of a cow. This planet is actually meant it belongs to the cows. It's meant for the cows. And we're meant to live in harmony with the cows. Cows need people to take care of them. And we need the cows. Because they give us valuable food in the form of so there's someone in charge of this planet and there's someone in charge of each and every planet. And there's somebody above all of these different planets. There's one ultimate control. Just, just like in the government. You have many different offices. Someone's in charge of education. Someone is in charge of the army. Someone is in charge of the hospitals, and medicine, medical supplies. Someone is in charge of agriculture. And someone is in charge of industry. But above all these, there's one supreme control. 
The next century is the beginning of the contemplation. In the same way, there's a hierarchy. There's the demigods in charge of material nature. Также иерархия подобна. Есть полубоги, материальные природы. Above all the demigods, there is one supreme god. И над всеми этими полубогами стоит верховный господь. So Yamaraj is a small authority. Поэтому Yamaraj это маленькая авторитет. He has some power. У него есть власть. But limited to punishing sinful human beings. Но она ограничена тем, что он может наказывать только греховных людей. He cannot, he doesn't punish any animals. Он не может наказать животных. He doesn't punish demigods. Полубогов. And he doesn't punish innocent. We get punished is because we're sinful. So Krishna consciousness is the process by which we can get rid of our sins. We commit sinful activities because of ignorance. Мы совершаем греховные поступки из-за нашего невежества. The root cause of all sin is ignorance. Корни всех греховных поступков является невежество. Because of ignorance, we have desires for sense gratification. Из-за невежества у нас есть желание чувственных наслаждений. And because of our desire for sense gratification, we do sinful activities. И именно из-за этого желания чувственных наслаждений мы совершаем духовные поступки. И эти духовные поступки заставляют нас принимать рождение вновь и вновь и нести за них наказание. Но когда мы получаем сознание Кришны, мы понимаем, and we can nullify that we can take away the reactions of all, all, all of our sins by devotional activity. However, a devotee, a devotee doesn't just simply want to do activities to get rid of sinful reactions. That would be devotional service in goodness. It's not pure devotion. Because we're just doing it to get rid of sinful reactions. Pure devotion is to act simply for the pleasure of Krishna. We just simply want to please Krishna. Devotee doesn't worry about his own sinful reactions. Of course, he's very careful not to commit more sinful activities. But he's not just thinking about his own self. He's thinking about Krishna. And he's thinking, let me serve Krishna. Let me become his servant. I'm a sinful person. I've done many wrongs in my past. I've committed many sinful deeds. Let me punish, let me suffer for that. But let me somehow be in, have the opportunity to engage in the service of Krishna. So that is devotion. That is the highest devotion that we simply want to be engaged in Krishna's service. Without any thought for our own self. Okay, some questions? Yeah.
Well, no, we say you have, we have, each, we each have our own independence. We have free will to choose. If we want to surrender to Krishna, we can do it. Of course, our surrender may not be fully, it may not be 100% surrender. We have some mixed devotion. We have some attraction. We would like to surrender to Krishna, but we still have some attachment or desires for the material life. Мы хотим предаться Кришне, но у нас еще есть какая-то привязанность к материальным вещам. So Krishna said, as you surrender, I reward you according. Кришна говорит, насколько ты предаешься мне, настолько я отвечу тебе. We sell, surrender a little bit to Krishna, then Krishna can reward us a little bit. Если мы немного предаемся Кришне, Кришна немного нам отвечает. He help us to make it easier for us to come to him. Он помогает нам. So Krishna gives us that kind of freedom. But it's for to fully surrender to Krishna, it's going to take some maybe some time, some practice, some endeavor. But we surrender a little bit in the beginning. We get some reciprocation from Krishna. We get some feeling that this is the right thing. And we surrender a little more. And gradually we get more and more confirmation that this is the right thing. I'm doing the right thing. We want to go further. So it's a gradual process, you could say. We come to the Krishna consciousness. Of course, we're not going to fully, immediately surrender. But we prepare ourselves. And gradually, we can we come through different stages of surrender. And Krishna is there and he's helping, he's, you know, he's showing us, or he makes, he helps us, he makes arrangements for us to make surrender easier for us. Sometimes Krishna does things like he takes away our attachments. And then when we lose all of our things which we're very attached to, then we feel very distressed and we feel very troubled that oh, I've lost everything. But when we lost everything, then we realize that we haven't lost Krishna and that we can still approach Krishna. So sometimes Krishna shows that kind of mercy to a devotee just by putting them into the difficult situation, having losses, material losses. That it makes surrender more appropriate, more it, it's easier for us.
So surrender is uh, also uh, done through the medium of the spiritual teachers that we surrender, we submit ourselves before spiritual authorities. And the spiritual teachers will give you some instruction to facilitate, to help you to surrender. The Vedic culture is arranged in such a way to help us to surrender. The, there are different ashrams. The four ashrams are there. Brahma, Achari, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, Sanyasi. They are all, the, this, this system of ashram is there to help us to surrender. There are different duties in each ashram. And these duties are there to help us to surrender. And we are also meant to move into the different ashrams. From one ashram you move into the next ashram. The young men, young brahmacharis, they are encouraged to take some responsibility, become family men. And then when, after having family for some time, then they retire. So they surrender, they give up their material work to take up full, full time spiritual duties. <coughs> and then they may even go on to become sannyasis and just dedicate themselves fully to missionary work. So it's surrender. It's an ongoing thing. We, we have to always surrender more and more. We, treat, we cannot think, oh, now I fully surrender. No, we have to surrender more. We have to continually surrender. But that surrender to Krishna is pleasing, it's satisfying, it's not trouble. We feel relieved by taking shelter of Krishna. We feel liberating us by making us surrender we are being liberated from the material world in the Bhagavad Gita Krishna says uh, this material nature is very difficult to overcome but if one surrenders to me it can easily Krishna Have you read this verse in Bhagavad Gita? <coughs> Krishna is saying material nature, material nature is very difficult to overcome. But when we surrender, it becomes very easy. Krishna говорит, материальная энергия очень трудно преодолеть. Тот, кто предался мне, тому это очень легко. So surrender is to make life easier for us. It seems like trouble, what seems like a lot of difficulty, but once we've surrendered, we realize that this, you know, life becomes so much easier. 
Вокруг столько много проблем, но когда мы предаемся, наша жизнь становится проще. Вот есть глава государства, да, как у нас Владимир Владимирович Путин в России. Иногда он устраивает такие день вопроса. И люди там по телевизору или там, по онлайн-конференции задают ему вопросы. То есть, ну, каждый может легко встретиться, так скажем. Можно быть сейчас поближе? So there is a, there is a president in Russia, Владимир Владимирович Путин, and sometimes uh, he held he uh, he held a uh, meeting uh, when people from all, 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 all over the Russia can uh, ring him, call him, and ask questions. Online. From all Russia. И почему, например, с Руни Бери, с управляющей этой землей, не, не, не такая же ситуация? Нет. Почему люди не могут таким же образом Well, we do see that 5,000 years ago there was problems on the planet, that the world was overburdened with demonic kings, and it was Boney Davy who did something about it. Uh, и неблагочестивыми правителями, и Буни Дэви, она на самом деле не делала что-то подобное. No, she went to Lord Brahma to complain to Lord Brahma about the situation on the Earth planet. Она пошла жаловаться Браме на ситуацию, которая образовалась на планете. And Lord Brahma and all the demigods, they all went to the shore of the Swetadvi to meditate on Lord Vishnu. И Брама, другие полубоги, они пошли к Шветодвихе на берег этого океана, чтобы медитировать на Господа. И тогда они получили ответ, что Господь явится в семействе Яду. And she is very concerned about it. And there is communication between the demigods and the, the, the different presiding deities. But this is Kali Yuga and people are very simple. Но сейчас Кали-Юга, люди очень духовные. Но в Кали-Югу полубогам не нравится спускаться сюда на землю, выходить сюда по какому-то жертвоприношению. Но они приходят сюда, когда мы совершаем Мы должны взять благо от этого периода времени, повторять святое имя и получить благо. So, yeah, the earth is in a mess because of the it's the simple activities of everyone. We, we want so much sense gratification. Из-за греховных поступков мы постоянно хотим наслаждать свои чувства. We take all the petrol from the planet. Мы выкачиваем нефть из земли. Just like in the times of Haranyaksha, he was looking everywhere for gold, and he was 
digging up the earth. And as a result, the earth became unstable and fell into the bottom of the Garbhadak ocean. So the same way we're doing so many things to the earth planet that one day the, this earth might fall into the bottom of the ocean again. We're, we're responsible for all the problems on the earth. It's not Mother Bhumi's fault. It's our, it's the human beings who have ruined the planet. And the real solution is Krishna consciousness. If more if the people will become Krishna conscious, then the earth planet can be put into a healthy condition. So therefore Lord Chaitanya came to give Krishna consciousness for everyone. The earth planet is facilitating Sankirtan movement. The earth planet gives us the opportunity for propagating Sankirtan. All over the planet we are able to propagate Sankirtan movement. Lord Chaitanya said the holy name would be chanted in every town and village. So this is the solution. This is how we can solve the problems of the planet. But just to call up Mother Bhumi and talk to her, you know, we have this problem, there's this going on in the planet, why don't you do something about it? You know, the, the real solution to all the problems is Krishna consciousness. Mother Bhumi knows everything. She knew the Kali Yuga was beginning. Therefore she took the form of a cow with tears in her eyes, lamenting for the condition. So we have to take care of the cows, we have to bring back the religious principles. And then the problems of the earth will be solved. It doesn't do any good just to have a, a meeting and pass a resolution. Make some new law. What we need to do is propagate Krishna consciousness. That can all, that's the real solution to the problems of the planet. We waste so much time online conferences, talking this and that. So many things going on. Questions and answers. But the real solution is questions and answers in relation to Krishna consciousness. In the second canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, you have Sukhadeva Goswami telling White Dance to Maharaj Purusha. 
Во второй песне еще когда его послание говорит Махарадж говорит, что Everyone's busy questions, putting so many questions and answers. Он говорит, что все так заняты, задавая постоянные вопросы. But the, the real question is the, how we, what we need to do to cultivate Krishna consciousness. Но главный вопрос это в том, что нам делать, чтобы развить сознание Кришны. And the answers are given in Srimad Bhagavatam. And the answers are given in Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is the answer to all the questions. Srimad Bhagavatam is the answer to all the questions. Srimad Bhagavatam Lord Chaitanya warned that you have to be very careful in association with the opposite sex. Now Lord Chaitanya was not against married life. He didn't have any, he wasn't a woman hater. <laughs> no. One of his intimate associates was a lady. His intimate associates were Swarup Damodar Goswami, Ramananda Rai, Siki Mahiti, and Siki Mahiti's sister. So they were the four intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya, three men and one woman. Uh, when one of his devotees, I think it was Shivananda Singh, but I think his, his, one of his intimate associates, his wife delivered a baby. I think it was Shivananda Singh. His wife had a child, and when the wife delivered the baby, Lord Chaitanya was very happy and he gave the name for the child. Shivananda so, uh, on the, but when Hari Das Junior, uh, Chota Hari Das, Chota Hari Das, associated 
with a woman, then Lord Chaitanya rejected him. Because Chota Haridas was in the renounced order of life. And he is not allowed to So Lord Chaitanya rejected him for not strictly following, for because he had deviated from the principles of renunciation. So Lord Chaitanya was not against married life, but he was against being a hypocrite. So it's not that Lord Chaitanya is saying you should not associate with your wife. But we should not associate with women just for sensuality. Но мы не должны общаться с женщинами ради чувственного удовольствия. Outside of marriage. Вне брака. So that kind of association is Lord Chaitanya is saying women in general generally we, we should separate the man and the woman. Сочетание Махапрабху говорил, что женщины и мужчины должны быть отдельно. Общение не должно быть отдельно. Women work with the other women. And the men work with the men. Now it's unfortunate that in the count this modern society you have a lot of women working. And they go to work with many other men. And they associate with a lot of men who are not their husband. It's not very good. It does not make a very healthy atmosphere. The woman should, a woman can be with her husband. But she should not just be an object for sense gratification for all the men. So Lord Chaitanya is warning that for devotional service you have to be very careful how you associate. You don't associate with, if you associate with materialistic people, then you can become also materialistic. We, of course, we associate with materialistic people for preaching, that's a different thing. We distribute books, we give Krishna consciousness to them, that's different, but we don't want to come to their level. And similarly with women, we have to be only associate with the opposite sex as much as necessary for something which is necessary we can associate. But if it becomes, you know, uh, if it becomes uh, joking and flirting and enjoying, you know, take, taking pleasure in the association of the opposite sex, then it's not good for Krishna consciousness. So Lord Chaitanya was very concerned about that. In his, of course, Lord Chaitanya appeared 500 years ago. People were very conservative. There was a distance between men and women. 
Почитание был очень обеспокоен по поводу этого. Но в то время, когда он жил 500 лет назад, общество было очень консервативное, была определенная дистанция между мужчинами и женщинами. Особенно в Индии, там была очень сильная культура, было ясное положение женщины и положение мужчины. Women should be taken care of, they should be protected. They should not be exploited. Prabhupada went to America in the 1960s when there was a women's liberation movement. А Прабхупада, когда приехал в Америку в 1960-х, там как раз шло движение за освобождение прав женщин. And Prabhupada said this women's liberation movement, this is the men cheating the women. И Прабхупада сказал, что все это движение за освобождение на самом деле является просто обманом, которым пользуются мужчины. Because they tell the women you are equal to the men. Потому что они сказали женщинам, что они равны мужчинам. So you also go to work. I'm working, you also go to work. But the woman has to have the baby. The woman gets pregnant and delivers a child and has to bring up a baby. The man doesn't do that. So in this way the man takes advantage of the women. И поэтому мужчины таким образом они воспользовали женщин. Но в ведические времена было все по-другому. Женщина была защищена. Женщина не могла просто ходить в полураздетой Женщины были всегда целомудренно одеты, голова была покрыта платком, а волосы были собраны. Так они хранили свою целомудрие. You don't worry much about their chest. They think it looks nice. They wear very short shorts. They wear very short shorts. Walk around everywhere, show off their body to the opposite sex. Гуляют, где им вздумается, показывают свое тело противоположным полом. So, it does not create a healthy environment. Это не создает здоровую атмосферу. It just encourages more immoral connections. Это создает еще больше аморальных отношений. And with the moral connections, then you get unwanted children. И в результате этого морального поведения появляется нежеланное потомство. Children, addicts, И вот эти нежеланные дети, рожденные при таких обстоятельствах, они становятся наркоманами и другие формы зависимости. Lord Shiva takes the soul of ghosts and he places the ghosts into the womb of women who have sex in irreligious condition. Shrimad Bhagavad Gita says that Lord Shiva takes the souls of ghosts and places them in the womb of women who have legal sex, who are engaged in unlawful sex. You know, the, the woman has a child, but that child is it's coming from the ghost body in the previous life. 
у женщины, у такой женщины появляется ребенок, но предыдущей жизни он был привидением. И поэтому очень, им очень сложно увидеть хорошие качества. Но если uh, пара их следует принципам, тогда у них к ним приходят очень хорошие души. They can attract the soul of a great yogi. Они могут также привлечь душу великого йога. Потому что они хотят родиться в, при... в семьях преданных. And quickly the, the child can develop Krishna consciousness. И такие дети очень быстро развивают сознание Кришны. Итак, Господь Чайтанья, он совсем не против женщин, он против лицемерия. Another, on another occasion, uh, Lord Chaitanya was in the Jagannath temple looking at the deity and an old lady climbed on his shoulders. Old lady. There was a lot of people in the temple and she couldn't see the deity. So this old lady climbed onto Lord Chaitanya and put her feet onto his shoulders so that she could see the deity. Mm -hmm. На одном из событий, когда Господь Читания был в Чаганатха Пури, он был в храме, и там собралось столько много людей, чтобы увидеть божества, и одна женщина в возрасте, она взобралась на спину Господа Читания, чтобы увидеть божество. And Lord Chaitanya said, oh, it's so nice, she's so eager to see Lord Jagannath. И Господь сказал, о, это так, Господь Читания сказал, это так здорово, она говорит, желание увидеть Господа Чаганатха. He did not mind, oh, this woman is touching me. Он совсем не подумал о том, что, ой, эта женщина касается меня. Он подумал, у нее желание так замечательно, так сильно увидеть Господа Чаканатха. Why are they all different sizes? Some are big and some are small. Почему они говорят разных размеров? Некоторые маленькие, некоторые большие. Кто это сделал?
हरी